Whatever you're selling online, it's your job to get more people to take action on your offer. So if you have a WooCommerce store and you're selling a product, you need to get people to buy. If you're selling an online course, you need to give people a reason to buy. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to accomplish that by using evergreen countdown timers. This right here is an evergreen countdown timer. In fact, it's the one I'm going to show you how to add to your website today. And you can see I have it sticking to the top of the page. And so whenever someone visits this page, the timer is going to start ticking. And I just have a special offer here with a little coupon code discount that they can enter in order to get them to take action right now to not leave this page and lose out on this offer, this discount offer. This works. You see it all over the place because it works. And now we're able to easily do this with a brand new update that came out to Cadence Blocks and Cadence Blocks Pro. Now, just to get this clear up front, this is in the professional version of Cadence Blocks. It's very cheap. It's like 50, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. And if you don't have Cadence Blocks Pro, there's a link in the video description box with a coupon code so you can save some money if you wanted to get that. But the good news is most of the people on the channel are already using Cadence Blocks Pro and they already have the product. So it's just showing you how to use this really cool thing that they just added. And I've got to say, I have used evergreen countdown timers before, and this is the best evergreen countdown timer that I've ever used. So now let me show you how to create this evergreen countdown timer that you're seeing right here. There's a bit to unpack because there's a lot of flexibility and things that you can do. It's not just the timer that you see here, this entire container and anything you want to put on a container, it is also a countdown container. It's really neat when I show you, uh, it'll start making sense. Now, Cadence Blocks can be used with any WordPress theme. I also happen to be using Cadence Theme, and this is actually one of the templates right here for a membership website that is included with the Cadence Theme, but it'll work with any theme that you have. Now, I of course already have Cadence Blocks and Cadence Blocks Pro installed and active on this website. So I'm gonna use a feature in their theme called Elements, and that's what allows me to have it here sticking to the top of the page. Uh, it's very simple. If you have a Pro theme, they have some similar feature guaranteed. You would just, if you wanted to create that sticky effect, you'd want to use that with whatever theme that you're using. You, you can add a container and a countdown timer anywhere that you want on your website, any page or post. So, but I'm going to do that sticky thing there. So let me go ahead and click on elements and I'm going to create a new one. And that happens to be a fixed element. So I'm going to choose fixed and I'll give this a name. Okay, now that I've given it a name, I'm going to click on publish, publish, and that's good. Now let me go ahead and click on the little icon here. And this is how I configure it. This is part of the theme. So for me, I'm going to want that fixed at the top. You can also have it appear after someone scrolls. It's up to you, but I think right away at the top is good for me. For the display, I'm going to not have it on the entire website. I just want it on one page. So I scroll down to where it says single pages and then I'm going to individually select it and then I'll click on select items and it happens to be that sales page right there. But this is just a list of all the pages that make up this website. And then the user, I'm going to show this to all users, but you have the option of showing it only when someone's logged in or logged out, whoever you want. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and create this countdown timer. I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to search for count. Well, just put the three characters. There it is. And I'm going to drag and drop it where I want it. Oops, I let go a little too soon. There we go. And here is my countdown timer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and let's make it so it's not counting just yet because I want to style it up. So when you first drag and drop it onto the layout, you can see when you click the navigation up here, this shows you everything that makes up your page. It creates a countdown container and it places a countdown timer in it. And so what I'm gonna do is design the layout inside of this countdown container and you're going to see how I do that. But when you click on the container right here, it's going to give us all of those countdown options. So for example, it says countdown type right here is by default, it's going to be by a fixed time, but I want to go evergreen right there. 
And so what you would do is you would put in the time that you want when someone first visits your evergreen countdown timer. Let's just say we want it to be uh, 21 hours and 19 minutes. What's gonna happen though, is when someone first visits your page, that person is gonna have a cookie put on their computer. Now this cookie is going to let your website know how much time is left in their timer. What you can do is also, if you wanted to have an IP address verification, we could toggle this on. And what will happen in this situation is when someone visits your website, your their IP address is gonna be recorded on your website. So if they visit the same page on a different device, on the same network, so they look on their phone, their tablet, their laptop, whatever, it's gonna be that same amount of time left in the evergreen countdown timer, okay? And so we have that on, and there's a little note here that this might result in a ever so slight delay when it's doing an IP address check. So uh, there's that there, and you'll have to make your own decision what you wanna do as it relates to GDPR. Okay, and then we have right here the actions on expire. So this is gonna be what happens when this countdown timer reaches zero. So let's look at our options. We can just hide the entire container, and that is how I happen to have that one set. We also have an option here to just replace the contents. So what that would mean is right here, this area here, we would just show something different when the timer reaches zero. So you have that option as well. So hide is obvious when you, when you choose it, it just hides. When you go with replace, you're gonna see, look at this right here. Now we have what shows when it's live, and you click here and it shows something entirely different when it expires, it's completely up to you. Uh, we also have a redirect when you choose that and you just put the URL in. So that means when someone visits that page where the timer is, it won't let them see any of the contents on that page, it'll take them someplace else. And here's where you'll put that address in. So I'm gonna just do a hide uh, right here. Now I'm gonna go to where it says countdown layout and that is everything that you see right here in this container, the layout for it. So I'm gonna wanna design this up a little bit and I'm gonna toggle this switch right here that says display countdown. I'm going to turn that off. And you might be saying, why do you want to turn off the countdown timer? And that's because I'm gonna put it back in, but in a layout that I've actually designed. So uh, the countdown configuration is attached to the container that everything's in. So now everything that I put inside of this container is now, it's now a countdown container. It'll all hide when the timer reaches zero. Whether or not I even have a countdown timer there. Okay, so let me go ahead and click on plus and I'm gonna put a row in. Uh, here's a row and I'm gonna give it a two column layout. What I want here on the right is the advanced heading, just like that. And that is what I'm using. Let me just put something in there. That's what I'm using here is the advanced heading. And I'm gonna show you how to do this little coupony thing. And then on the left, I actually have my countdown timer. So I'm gonna put that there and there is the actual timer. So now uh, I can style this up and put whatever content that I want in this. Let me first get the styling looking a little how I want it. Um, when I go to the navigator here, here is still my countdown settings, but I wanna style up the row that's inside of the container. So I'm gonna go to row layout and let me make this maybe 25%. Yeah, let's go 20 is fine. Yeah, let's do it like that. And now I want to adjust my alignment. You see how the text is up to the top. Here's my alignment options. I want it to be like all centered in middle. That looks uh, perfect for me. All right, so now let's go ahead and click on our countdown timer and let's go ahead and look at these settings that we may or may not want to apply. So the first one I wanna do is I wanna change the background of where the timer is. So I'm gonna click on container settings and then there it is, the background color. I'll just choose some random red or something like that. Uh, you can choose whatever color you want. You can enter a color code. That looks uh, fine with me. Uh, but what we have now is we need to make the timer and the labels white so it looks better. 
So I'm gonna go right here where it says the number settings and I'm gonna choose the color of white, just like that. Let me collapse that and then the label settings and I'll go ahead and I'll make that white. Uh, there it is. So now I could actually um, uh, change out the label, font, the font sizes and the thickness of these if I wanted. So for the label where I'm at right now, I went with like a 10. So you see how it's smaller? I went with a 10 here, just like that. And then I also want to do the same thing for the number setting. I think I went with like a 20. There we go. Maybe 20 or 22. Uh, something like that. That looks uh, fine for me. Okay, next thing I want to do is, you see how it says days and it only has a zero? I want that to be a zero, zero. This happens to be underneath the countdown layout right here. And you see right here, it says enable zero, zero number format. I'm gonna turn that on just like that. And that looks uh, pretty good. And also I want it centered in the container. So it says the countdown alignment right where I'm at. And there we go, we have it centered inside of the container now. We have additional options here if you wanted, like the, you know, the separator in there, the divider, which is the two dots. I prefer not having those, so I'll go with that. And we can also change our labels. So I did here, I changed out the labels some. So it's entirely up to you if you want to change out those labels. You have the option right here. All right, so I'll go ahead and collapse that. And next thing I want to do is, I don't know, I think I want to make the numbers a little bolder and kind of have them stand out. I'm still in the number settings right here. So where it says font weight, let, let's see what that looks like, bold. bold. Yeah, that looks um, uh, better to me, uh, having it bolded out like that. Okay, so far this is looking good. So let's go ahead and now focus on the text. And so I have this bit of text right there. Actually, let me just copy and paste this across so I don't have to sit there and type it out again. So let's go here. Let's get rid of that and paste it in. And here is my test text as I entered it. First thing for the advanced text block, we need to choose an HTML tag. I'm going to go with paragraph like that. And that looks good to me. Now, I did want to bold the special offer. So if I highlight it, there's this bold option right there. That's looking good. Now, what we're going to do in order to create this coupon look is going to use my favorite feature in this advanced heading block called highlighter. So what I can do is select my bit of text, click on the arrow and then choose highlight. And right now you don't see it do much, right? You just saw it change the text to red, but that's okay because when I scroll down here in the settings, there's a highlighter settings option right here. But this is where I can do something different with that bit of text that I put the highlighter on. Okay, so for the, the font color, I'm gonna make that white. There we go, and now you can't see it, but don't worry. Uh, and for the background, I'll go ahead and choose some kind of a red. Uh, there we go. That looks good. And then for the border, I'm going to just choose kind of a, a black or maybe that right there. That's fine. Now you don't see the border because I haven't uh, added any pixels to it. So you see that here, highlight border. So let's go ahead and increase this to like a two. And now you see this border, but we want that coupon look. And so we have the border style. And I'm going to do dashed. Yeah, dashed looks good to me, but it still looks a little tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and there's an option for padding. So I'm going to add a little bit of spacing off to the right and the left of it. And so I can do that here. So if I put a 10 there and a 10 there, we just gave ourselves some spacing. We can even add a little bit of uh, padding on the top and the bottom. I think that's more than I used right there. Uh, there we go. But that looks fine. Uh, all right. So now, uh, this actually looks good. If I want to make it all larger, the whole thing larger, that would just be the overall font control. So right here is the font size. So let me see what it looks like at a 20. Actually, the 20 looks good. All right, so now all I need to do is, let's see what this is really going to look like. I'll click right here and then click on countdown. And uh, there, there we have it. I'm just going to go ahead and click on update and... What we can do is, I didn't show you how to keep an evergreen countdown timer in sync if you wanted multiple timers on your website. 
So when I click into the countdown container right there, uh, countdown container, and then click right here where it says block and we have our settings. If I give it a countdown campaign ID, enter in a campaign ID, I can use that same campaign ID on other timers on my website. And what that would allow me to do is keep them entirely in sync. So I can use a countdown timer anywhere on the site. It'll be perfectly synced up. All I have to do is enter an ID here. So you can see I entered in special offer. So I can put that on any countdown timer on the site and everything will be perfectly in sync. So that's how easy it is to add an evergreen countdown timer on your website. Now this concept of having the countdown container is quite powerful. You could put anything inside of that countdown container and it won't be accessible or viewable to someone once that countdown timer reaches zero. In fact, you could put the entire page contents inside of a countdown container and it would expire. So this is very powerful, all of the different options you could use it with. This would work great with WooCommerce stores. If you're using cart flows, it'll look work amazing with cart flows or any kind of scarcity offer that you want to have on your site. Now I gotta say, I've been using this myself and on one of my websites, well, a few of my websites, and there has been a significant uptick in sales just by making this, this initial offer to people that says, hey, don't leave my site. I'm gonna give you a discount, take action now. You could save a little bit of money. If you come back later, this coupon code and all that's not gonna be visible or available to you. So anyways, that's using an, out, uh, an evergreen countdown timer. That's how you add it to your website. It's so easy. It's one of those special tricks that marketers use and it's a win-win. You can use this and it encourages people to take action on your offers and purchase now. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial video. If you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed and if you had any questions, you can ask down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.